Jordan, this is a bad idea. We're Canadian. We avoid controversy at every opportunity. It's probably in our anthem somewhere. This is diving headfirst naked into a hornet's nest. This is being caught in a forum tornado F5 on the Fujita scale, and we have to chain ourselves to the plumbing. This is a stupid idea. Can we please Do you know the lyrics to our anthem? Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here, and yes, we are here to dispel a common misconception. You see, conventional wisdom would state this. If you've got two cameras with the exact same size of sensor, if one sensor has lower megapixels, it's going to have bigger physical pixels and it should have better low light performance. And then a camera with more megapixels has smaller photo sites and it's going to actually have worse low light performance. But the fact of the matter is that's just not true. And we're going to show you guys why that is. Now I'm going to request of all of you a courtesy here as well, because let's keep in mind the context that this is a video format. We can only go so far down this rabbit hole. We're going to keep things simple today, but there is an excellent article that Rich Richard Butler at Deep Your Review wrote tons of information. You guys should check that out. The link is in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's go down this veritable minefield and see how it goes. I want to take you guys down a little moment in history which shows that Jordan and I were blissfully ignorant of this concept ourselves and therefore perpetuated this myth at the camera store because we remember a particular time where you had two big full-frame SLRs competing against each other from the big two companies. You had the Canon EOS 5D Mark II with its 21 megapixel sensor and the Nikon D700 with its 12 megapixel sensor. And so when trying to explain which camera a new user should go with, you would say, well, the D700 had better low light performance. It was the champion when it came to low light quality. Whereas the 5D Mark II suffered in that regard, but it had more megapixels so you could print larger. And to prove to the customer that we weren't just talking out of our asses, we perform a little experiment experiment. We would take a low light photo on both cameras there in the shop. We'd put them on the computer workstation and we'd show them both cameras at 100% magnification. And when you looked at both cameras at 100% magnification, the D700 indeed did have better low light performance and the 5D Mark II did have more noise in the file. And that was an easy way to show the customer that we were right. But unfortunately, we were kind of wrong. And why I keep harping on 100% is because it wasn't just us. I mean, Deep Your View back in the day when they would compare cameras, they would show the photos at 100%. In fact, the whole industry would perpetuate the idea of pixel peeping files on different cameras at 100% magnification. But the problem is that doesn't go far enough to really show the difference. Because if you took a D700 file and a 5D Mark II file and you looked at them both full screen, or if you especially printed them both out at the same print size, then this big low light difference in quality was not apparent. History lesson number two, the Sony a7S. Now when this first came out, it enamored the entire industry with its excellent low light quality. And I think again, a lot of it was because it was a lower 12 megapixel full frame sensor. And I think a lot of people had in their heads, oh, lower megapixels, better for low light. And the fact of the matter is there was a lot of reasons why they went with a lower megapixel sensor. That's also something we're gonna to touch on a little bit later. But the primary reason why the a7S did so well in low light was actually it was one of the first dual gain sensor cameras on the market. And that's why we saw such a big improvement. And now if you fast forward to today where multiple cameras and platforms use dual gain sensor technology, well, you're basically back to a level playing field. So let's look at what's really going on here. Okay, so we've got a little experiment that we're gonna try. We're gonna test two different cameras. So we're looking at the Sony A7S III. It's a 12 megapixel camera, often advertised as being an excellent low light platform. And we're gonna compare that against the Sony A7R IV, which is a 60 megapixel high resolution camera. And we like this experiment for a couple reasons. First off, we're doing the same brand. So we don't have any variances between different manufacturers. And also very important that when you're testing and talking about these noise levels, we gotta talk about the same generation of camera, right? We're not testing something that's five years old versus something current, that doesn't fly. So we've got two Sony cameras, basically made at the same time, both backside illuminated sensors, and I think this is gonna work out very well. So we took photos on each camera in a low light situation. Uh, we're shooting 6400 ISO, same exact lens for both shots, same lighting, same position. And on these photos, we didn't do anything to them, okay? We're not doing any noise reduction. There's no color noise reduction, no sharpening, no interpolation, nothing done, just the files as they are. We've got a great place to take them to as well. We're going to resolve photo. You should 
check out their website. We've worked with the owner, Costas, before. He does an amazing job printing here in Calgary. And honestly, in our opinion, there's just no other place to go if you want to do high-end printing. So let's head into the shop now and let's get these printed out and see what we get. Okay, Costas, thank you so much for helping us out and letting us work on the shop here today. Really appreciate it. So we've got two pictures here. Um, we, we tried to go with a print size that's not gonna push the A7S3 too far as far as megapixel yep. count goes, right? Yep. So in this case, we printed them both at 11 by 17. Yep. The A7R4 at 560 pixels per inch. Okay. And the A7S3 at 250 pixels. Okay, Costa, so we've got our prints here. We're primarily concerned about noise for this video. So, I mean, looking at the two, what did we find? Well, we've taken a look at them in the color booth mm -hmm. under controlled lighting and uh, it's hard to see any difference with right. the color noise. I mean, you know, There's, looking in these areas yeah. here where they're so similar. Yep. There's a few spots where one is maybe a little different than the other and the other is a little different from the other, but overall it's, uh, it's hard to see a difference in the color yeah. noise. What I do notice is a difference in detail. And I noticed yeah. that more than I noticed the difference in color noise. Yeah, the A7R4 file still looks sharper. And again, we, as we talked about, this is overkill for this print size, no problem. This should be able to handle it. Now, we could sharpen this, right? We haven't interpolated, we haven't yeah. sharpened, and we could do noise reduction as well, right? Yep, but we could do that with the other one too. Yeah, and absolutely. still gonna have more detail. Yep. Can we try one more experiment? Because this is okay for this particular megapixel count, print size. Can we print these larger and see if everything holds up the same? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, wow, this is, this is definitely gonna make a difference. Wow, yeah, so this gives us a much better idea of what's really going on here when yeah. it's this magnified. So what did we end up doing here? So we printed them both at 22 by 33 inches. Okay. The A7R4 is at 288 pixels per inch, okay. and the A7S3 is at 129 pixels right, per inch. Right, right, right. So dramatically less enlargement on the A7R4. And that's interesting, because again, we talk about noise here, right? I mean, this camera might inherently have less noise, but we're magnifying it more, right? And the noise looks blockier. It actually looks it, yeah, like there's worse bigger than this. blocks of color noise in this one. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so the other thing here, of course, now we really see a resolution difference, right? I yeah. mean, up close this looks quite soft. Again, we haven't interpolated or anything like nope. that. But As is. this could go even bigger with that. That could go sense. a lot bigger. And uh, this one, you know, could about this big with a little bit of work, we'd probably get it to look like that one. Right. Yeah. But then this we could work on and go. You got it. So Costas, first off, thank you so much. I mean, this was, I think, a really great way to show what we're trying to get across and learned a lot. I mean, I expected the A7S3 file to be better. This actually still looks a little bit better in low light. So I think if you're talking same generation of sensors, you know, similar kinds of cameras, I think we've dispelled the myth that lower megapixels means better low light because that's not necessarily the case. I've never wished for lower res. <laughs> I've always wished for higher res. <laughs> so you'd go Sony A7R4 file here over the Sony A7R4 file? Oh yeah, file. absolutely, yeah. yeah. So why didn't we see an appreciable difference between the two cameras when we printed them out? Well, here's the thing. First off, I wanna say that if we're magnifying both files 100% on a computer, absolutely, the A7R4 with its higher resolution sensor will have more noise than the A7S3's lower resolution sensor. But we don't look at pictures at 100%. We pixel peep at 100%. We look at pictures full screen on a panel, or we look at pictures full size on a print. And in that regard, there's a lot of stuff going on. So in very simple terms, when we make a print size where we're not pushing the lower resolution A7S 3 file beyond where we're gonna start to see the pixels, that means that the A7R 4 file with way more megapixels is basically just magnified way less. And that reduces the visibility of the noise that helps to equate things. As well, with the A7R4 having more pixels and more detail, I could apply more noise reduction and still get away with a sharp looking file. That will also improve our noise. So it really does end up sounding like more megapixels is a better thing. Why not just get always the highest megapixels possible? Well, 
The situation is more complicated than that, and let's talk about why you might want a lower resolution sensor. Now classically one area where lower resolution sensors have been desirable is video cameras. Now first off, low resolution sensors have tended to be faster scanning sensors. That helps mitigate a lot of issues with rolling shutter and it also helps when you want to do things like high frame rate recording, you don't want to have heavy crops and things like that and still make it easy on the camera. You can go higher resolution but then when the cameras have to down sample that although the quality is excellent, has a lot of advantages that we talked about with photography, it can be hard on the camera's processing power lead to overheating issues and things like that. And even with all that being said, processing power gets better all the time and high resolution sensors are getting faster and faster scan rates. So this whole concept of having a low res video camera and a high res photo camera might actually be a thing of the past. We're seeing that even happen now. So you might have high resolution sensors that do great video and also give us great advantages for photography. And in photography as well, there are some situations where a lower res sensor actually is desirable. We see this a lot with sports cameras or cameras meant for journalism, you know, situations where photography might not need 46 megapixels to do wall size prints. Maybe they just want to display photos on a website. They want something that's easy to work, easy to edit, and easy to upload to their editors. And when shooting, they want smaller file sizes so their camera can shoot quickly without filling up the buffer. Well, in those regards, lower resolution sensors can be a good thing. But again, same story. We're seeing cameras get faster all the time. Buffers increase in size all the time. And I think we're still going to see megapixels continue to creep up and up and up. Now, although it may sound like it, we're not pushing you to get super high resolution bodies by default, okay? It's always gonna be what's best for you. And a great tool to actually figure that out, go to deepreview.com and check out their studio scene comparison tool. If you click here, you can actually see multiple cameras at the maximum viewing size of the lowest resolution sensor. And that gives you a far more fair comparison over what you're actually getting. Okay. In the end, we just want to kind of dispel this myth that higher megapixel cameras suck in low light and lower megapixel cameras are always better. And that's not really the case. Hopefully we've given you some of that insight here today. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm apprehensive to say it, but leave your comments slash insults below, trying not to make them too personal. And if you really want to hurt us, check out deepreview.com's forums. It's going to be a rip roar and thrill riot in there. But uh, I guess thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon if we decide to ever do this kind of stuff again.